Hey, what's up folks, David here, and this video is all about how to play major scales. And it's a topic that we've alluded to a little bit on the channel here through stuff like the beginner series or some of the fiddle tune lessons that we've done here, but we haven't really taken a deep look at this until now. But I'm excited to say this is gonna be the first video and what will hopefully be a really big expansive series all about music theory for mandolin players. So we're gonna talk about scales and arpeggios and scale patterns, all sorts of stuff like that that can help us become better players. But we're actually gonna cover quite a lot of ground in this video here today. We're gonna to start off by by talking about why scales are so important. Then we're gonna look at some scale mechanics to make sure that we're all on the same page theory-wise. And then I'm gonna show you how to play all 12 major scales here in the first position on the mandolin. I'm gonna show you my fingerings, the way that I like to play these, and I'll show you a really fun scale exercise that you can use the circle of force as a vehicle to get through all 12 major scales at once. So we have quite a lot to cover here. When you're ready, grab your mandolin and let's dive in. So let's start off just by clearing the air here and answering the question that I know a lot of people have when they first come to learning these scales, which is, do I need to know how to play scales in order to be a good mandolin player or even a good musician? And of course, the answer is no. There've been so many great musicians throughout music history who don't know a lick of theory but can still outplay pretty much everyone. But for the rest of us mere mortals, I think scales and music theory offer a really clear path forward to getting better and to getting better faster. Because these major scales, they aren't just technical exercises, right? If I were to define what a scale actually is, I have to say that it's a group of notes that you can use to play a certain song. And as mandolin players, we're often in situations where we have to play by ear and that's really important knowledge to have. So for example, if you're at the bluegrass jam and you're playing a song that you've never heard before in your life, but you know it's in the key of C major and you know your C major scale, that's gonna give you a huge leg up on being able to figure out the melody by ear or taking educated guesses at what the chord progression could be or improvising a new melody off the cuff, up and down the fretboard, it all starts with that major scale. Plus, they are really great technical exercises too. <laughs> and please don't be like me when I was first starting to play mandolin because I just stuck to the easy scales for the longest time, like G, C, D, and A, but I would inevitably go to a jam and they would be playing a song in the key of B major. I would have no idea what to play and would crash and burn. So by learning all 12 major scales, you're gonna be covering all your bases to hopefully be able to collaborate and make music with people no matter what situation you find yourself in. So if I've convinced you with my little soapbox speech here, let's move on to some scale mechanics now and talk about how these scales actually work. So there's really only 12 major keys out there and 12 corresponding major scales, one to go along with each note on the chromatic scale. By the way, if you don't know about the chromatic scale or how the musical alphabet works up and down the fretboard here, I'd recommend checking out this other video up here in the cards above and coming back when you're ready. So for these major scales, we're gonna take the 12 notes of the chromatic scale and just boil it down to seven specific notes. And those seven notes are represented by letters along our musical alphabet. So let's take C major and the C major scale, for example, here, and we'll start by playing the root of the key, which is just the letter name of the scale we're playing. So C for C major. And then we're gonna walk up the musical alphabet from there. So C, D, E, F, G, hopping up to A now, B, before we get back to C again. And a good thing to remember as we get into other scales here is that no major scale out there has two of the same letters in the scale. So you won't have two C's, two B's, anything like that. They're all in sequential order. But the challenge is when we do get to those other keys, we start adding in what we call accidentals, which are sharps or flats to alter the spacings of the notes to get the major sound that we're after. So let's check out the G major scale now, which, spoiler, if you don't know already, has one sharp note in the scale. So we'll start with the root note for our key, which is G now and we'll walk up to A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, before we get back to G again. But the cool thing is that the number of sharps or flats in a specific key is gonna remain a constant, right? So C major is always gonna have zero sharps and zero flats. G major is always gonna have one sharp in the key signature, and it's gonna be F sharp. But beyond that, as we start going into other keys that add in more sharps, or we start going into flat keys that add in more flats, those accidentals start appearing in really predictable order. So for instance, D major, which has two sharps, is still gonna have an F sharp note like we had in the key of G major, but now we're adding in a C sharp note as well. And next when we get to the A major scale, which has three sharps, we still have F sharp and C sharp like we did in D major, but now we're adding in a G sharp. And that pattern continues as we keep adding in extra sharps for other major keys, and something that we call the order of sharps that you see here on screen. So if you encounter a key signature that has five sharps in it, you can start on this end and count up five notes on the order of sharps. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp. And the handy thing is, is that when you start playing in flat keys, the order of flats is just the opposite of the order of sharps. So we're gonna start on this end with B flat, 
the next key would have B flat and E flat, the next key would have B flat, E flat, and A flat, and so on. Another thing to keep in mind is that no key signature out there combines sharps and flats. You're either dealing in one or the other, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up in your mind. And all these keys and different key signatures and flats and sharps and all this stuff fits into a grand puzzle that we often refer to as the circle of fifths or the circle of fourths. And don't worry if you've never seen this before, I know it seems super overwhelming, but we're gonna keep unpacking it as we go through this video. And if you want your own PDF copy of this chart, as well as tab and notation transcriptions of all the different scales and exercises we're gonna look at here today, you can find it over on my Patreon page at the link in the cards above. But for now, let's just tuck all that music theory jargon away in the back of our heads and let it simmer as we start focusing on actually playing these scales now. I think the best way to get started is just focusing on the formula that we use to build any major scale. It's just a simple recipe of whole steps and half steps. And that recipe is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. <laughs> It's hard to say. If you don't know what whole steps and half steps are, a whole step is just the distance between two notes that are two frets apart. So like the second fret to the fourth fret on your G string. And then a half step is just two notes that are one fret apart. So the second to the third fret on your G string. So let's see how this recipe works for your G major scale. We're gonna start with a whole step from your G string to your second fret. Then we have another whole step to the fourth fret. Then we have a half step to the fifth fret. The next is a whole step, which could be the seventh fret, but we're just gonna hop up to our open D string instead. Then we have another whole, whole, and then a half to finish it out. And that's the same recipe that we're gonna use here to find all 12 major scales. All we have to do is start with the root note of the scale we wanna play, so G for G major, and then whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So let's come back to that G major scale now, right? We've learned the first octave of the scale, but we can keep repeating those notes in higher octaves to cover the entire territory here in the first position. And here's what I like to do with these major scales, is start with the lowest possible root that we have, which is your open G string for the key of G, and then walk up the scale to the highest possible note that you can reach without having to shift up the neck, which for the key of G would be this B note here on the seventh fret of the E string. And then we'd walk our way back down the way we came. That way you've got all the notes that you could possibly play in the key of G here in the first position. And if anyone's curious about this, I know a lot of violinists will use open strings when they're ascending a scale, but then on the way back down, we'll use their fourth finger to avoid any bleed from one string to the next. And that's fine if you want to, but honestly, I really like the sound of the open string. So if there is an open string on the scale, I like to use it both ascending and descending. And it's not just a cop out to avoid using our fourth finger, because as we'll see, as we get to some tougher keys, we're definitely gonna be using this finger a lot. <laughs> Another technical note here is that we're playing eighth notes for this first position version, and we're gonna be using alternate pick strokes. So we'll start with a down stroke and then alternate from there, no matter what string you're on or what string you're going to, make sure you keep that alternation motion going. So let's try out this G major scale in the first position together now. So you remember G major has one sharp in our key signature, right? But let's come over to that circle of fourth chart again and see how we can get to our next key, which is actually C major. So you remember this one, right? We have C as our root here on the fifth fret of the G string, whole step to our D note, whole step to our E note, half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A, whole step to B, before we get back to C again. Zero sharps and zero flats is so nice. So now let's see if we can learn all those notes for the C major scale in the first position to learn all the territory possible to play in the key of C. But this is where it gets a little bit tricky because unlike the key of G where we had our low root as the lowest possible note on the mandolin, here for C we have our root on the fifth fret of the G string. So there's notes behind the root that we wanna catch. Also our high root is way up here on the eighth fret and we can't actually get it without shifting. So we're gonna have to rearrange things in order to still play the root at the beginning and the end of the scale, but also catch all of that territory. And here's the solution that I've come up with. <laughs> so starting with the root, we're gonna walk our way up to the highest note possible that we can reach without having to shift, which would be B right here on the seventh fret again. I know it sounds weird because you really wanna resolve it to the C at the end, but we're gonna resist that urge and walk back down. And then pass the low root to catch those three notes on our G string for walking back up to the root. Now that's a maze, isn't it? And I really like playing it this way because again, we're covering all the territory that you have in the C major scale, but you're still hearing it with the bookends of the root to give context for what you're playing. So try this out with me here. And 
that's a treatment that we're gonna have to use with a lot of major scales here in the first position, including this next one on the circle of fourths, which is F major. And this is where we're gonna start adding in some flats to our key signatures. So F major has one flat, and uh, if you remember your order of flats, that's gonna be a B flat note, right? And all the other notes are gonna be natural. So if we start with F, here's what we have. F, whole step to G, whole step to A, half step to B flat, whole step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E, before we get back to our F. So to learn all the notes for the F major scale here in the first position, this is the lowest possible root that we have here on the third fret of the D string. So we're gonna start here, work our way up to the highest note that we can play in the scale without having to shift, which is B flat now here on the sixth fret of your E string. And work our way back down past the root to the lowest possible note, which is G, and then back up to F. Sounds like this. All right, we're a quarter of the way there now. Let's move on to the key of B flat now, which is the next key on the circle of fourths. This key has two flats in there, so we're gonna keep the B flat note from before. And we're gonna add in an E flat note as well. All the other notes are gonna be natural. So let's start on the B flat here on your third fret of your G string. Walk up a whole step to C, whole step to D, half step to that E flat note, whole step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A, then we're back at B flat. So for the first position version of this scale, we'll start with that low root here on the third fret of the G string, work our way up to the highest possible note in the first position, which is actually a B flat note, so it works out pretty well for this key. Then we'll work our way back down to the lowest possible note, which is G, then back up to the B flat to end it. And this is a tricky key because we're starting to lose access to open strings. Since we have an E flat in the key signature, we won't be able to use our open E string. Instead, we'll play the E flat here on the sixth fret of our A string with our pinky. All right, it's your turn now. Our next key is the key of E flat, which has three flats in our key signature, B flat, E flat, and we're adding in an A flat note as well. So we're losing another open string. We can't use our open A. We're gonna have to play the A flat here on the sixth fret of our D string with the dreaded pinky. So start with that E flat here on the first fret of your D string, then we'll go up a whole step to F, whole step to G, half step to A flat, whole step to B flat, whole step to C, whole step to D, half step to E flat. And for that first position version, we'll start the same place. Walk up to the high B flat, back down beneath the root to the lowest possible note, which is G, then back up to your root. All right, here we go. Let's try that E flat scale together. to even more unfamiliar territory here with the A flat major scale. This one has four flats in our key signature, which would be B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. So let's start with that low A flat here is our root on the first fret of the G string. And then we'll walk up a whole step to B flat, whole step to C, half step to D flat, whole step to E flat, whole step to F, whole step to G, and then a half step to A flat. So another open string bites the dust with that D flat note here on the sixth fret of our G string. Can't play that open D anymore. We still have access to our open G, which we're gonna play at the end of our first position version of the scale. It goes like this. All right, halfway there, but now we have to tackle one of the most difficult scales to play in the first position on the mandolin, the D flat major scale. And for this one, we can't use any open strings anymore. They're all gonna be flat because we have five flats in our key signature, which would be B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat now. So we'll have to start with our D flat here on the sixth fret of our G string with our pinky. And I know it's tempting to shift up with your ring finger, but let's stay in the first position with our pinky there and play from this point. So we'll start with D flat on our pinky, go up a whole step to E flat, whole step to F, half step to G flat, whole step to A flat, whole step to B flat, whole step to C, and then D flat at the end. All right, and the first position version of this scale is a little bit tricky. To make it fit within a four measure excerpt, we're gonna walk up to the high E string and do a little shift from the first fret to the second fret. That way we can reach all the way up to the eighth fret with our pinky before coming back down the exact same way. Shift. 
all the way down to the low A flat, which is the lowest note we can play in this scale before walking back up to the root. This one's a finger buster, but when you're ready, let's try this together. This next key is also a beast. And for this one, we're gonna make the shift from playing in flat key signatures to playing in sharp key signatures. And this is where it's a little bit confusing because we also have this thing called enharmonic spellings. You may have noticed here on our circle of fourth chart, the keys here at the bottom have a couple different options, right? And those keys with lots of sharps and lots of flats are confusing because they can be thought of in two different ways. You know, D flat can be thought of as one fret lower than D, but it can also be thought of as C sharp, which is just one fret higher than C. Same pitch, different name. <laughs> but for our purposes in this video, I've just chosen probably the most common spellings of the keys that we'll find in mandolin music. So after D flat, instead of going on to G flat, we're gonna think about this next key as F sharp which has six sharps in our key signature, right? Those sharps would be F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, and E sharp, is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna start with our F sharp root here on the fourth fret of the D string, and we're gonna play it with our ring finger here and just finger things up from there. So next would be a whole step up to the G sharp note on the sixth fret, whole step to A sharp, half step to B, whole step to C sharp, whole step to D sharp, and then a whole step to E sharp, and then a half step up to F sharp. <laughs> it's weird thinking in that many sharps. And then for the first position scale, we're gonna follow the same path and do another little shift from the one to two on our E string. That way we can play the seventh fret on our E string before walking back down, shifting, playing to the lowest possible note here, which would be G sharp before walking back up to the root. All right, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get into some more familiar territory with this next key on the circle of fourths, B major, which is actually a key that's pretty common in a lot of bluegrass jams. This key has five sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. And we're gonna start with a low root here on the fourth fret of our G string, again, with your ring finger. Then we'll play C sharp with your pinky, whole step up to D sharp, half step to E, whole step to F sharp, whole step to G sharp, whole step to A sharp, and then we're up at B. For the first position version, we're gonna follow that same path. We're gonna do a little bit of a shift here on the A string with your first finger from the first fret to the second fret to make things a little bit easier on the A and E strings. Walking up to that high B and voila, we have an open string back in our availability, which is really nice, the open E. But then we'll work our way back down, shift back down to the first fret on the A string, walk down to the G sharp before landing on the root again. Let's give that a shot together. Three more to go. Next is E major, which is even more familiar territory. This one has four sharps in the key signature, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. We're gonna start with the root here on the second fret of your D string, walk up a whole step to F sharp, whole step to G sharp. Now we have our open A, walk a half step up to that, whole step to B, whole step to C sharp, hold to D sharp, and then our root half step up to E. And for all the notes in the first position, we'll walk all the way up, to our high B note again. Back down beneath the root, and here we have to shift down to our index finger on the first fret of the D string to catch that D sharp note. And then we'll play all the notes on the G string from there. G sharp on the first fret again. Walking back up to the E. All right, a good one here, A major. It has three sharps, right? F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Start with the root here on the second fret of your G. We go up a whole step to B, whole step to C sharp. Now we have our open D string, half step up to D. Then we have whole step to E, whole step to F sharp, whole step to G sharp, up to open A. First position is pretty easy. We're gonna walk all the way up to the high B again. Back down. Shift down to the G sharp and then back up to the A. That's the only little tricky part here. <laughs> All right, last one, D major, two sharps, F sharp, C sharp. You got this one. Open D, whole step to E, whole step to F sharp, half step to G, whole step to A, 
whole step to B, whole step to C sharp, half step to D. And we'll play it in the first position, so we walk up to the high B again, pinky way back down, beneath the root to grab the low G, and back up to your root. And there you go, you've played through all 12 major scales in the first position. And let's just take a break here to decompress after all that information because we've covered a lot, but we still have a little to go yet. So let's come back over to that circle of fourth chart and unpack a couple of things that you may have noticed as we were going through all those different keys. So as we go around the circle counterclockwise, you'll see that we're just moving from one scale to the next in what we call a root motion of a fourth. So as we go from the G scale to the C scale, those two roots, G and C, are what we call a perfect fourth apart. A perfect fourth is an interval just like a whole step or a half step like we talked earlier. And a perfect fourth is always gonna be five frets apart. And the same pattern continues, right? From C to F is a perfect fourth, from F to B flat, B flat to E flat keeps on going, right? And for some reason, Western music just works that way, where you can use the interval of a fourth to get around all 12 keys in this really even way. And some people choose to go the opposite way around the circle, which would just be the circle of fifths, flipping that interval upside down. So instead of going from G to C, you'd be going from C to G, if that makes sense. It's confusing, I know, but let's just stick to the circle of fourths for now. And another thing that you may have noticed is that as we go around the circle, we're just adding in a sharp or taking a flat away. We're just making these incremental changes from one key to the next, which is why this circle is so handy. It shows us the relationship between each key. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually see that relationship unfold on the fretboard as you switch from one scale to the next. So let's check out the A major scale, for instance. This high octave here pretty easy, right? And as we move to the next key on the circle of fourth, which is D major, we can actually keep our fingerings exactly the same, but just move our fingers up a string towards the ceiling, right? So we can play that same shape for our D major scale now on the D and the A strings, just like we had on the A major scale for the A and the E strings, right? And that pattern really continues as you continue around the circle of fourth. You're almost just sliding the scale up a string every time you make a key change. And a great way to see this relationship from key to key and to burn these scales into your muscle memory is to try out this scale exercise that I really like to do, which is using the circle of fourth to play through all 12 major scales without stopping, which is kind of crazy, but it sounds like this. So all I'm doing there is playing up one scale on the circle of fourths, back down, but stopping at the last note I play before reaching the root of the key that I started on. Instead, I'm shifting up to the root of the next key on the circle of fourths, which would be C here. Then playing up that scale in the first position, playing to the very last note I play before getting back to the root, shifting up to the next root, which is F. So you get the idea. You can figure this out on your own, or you can grab the PDF transcription for this exercise over on my Patreon page at the link in the description below. But hey, you've just learned all 12 major scales on the mandolin in the first position, and that's a huge undertaking. I'm really proud of you for getting through this, but this is really just the beginning, right? We still have to figure out how to apply these scales, how to use them for improvising, for finding chord progressions, all sorts of stuff like that. So be sure to check out some other videos that you see here on screen and definitely subscribe, like if you want to see more mandolin content like this in your life. But thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment in the section below if you found this helpful, if you have any other questions and uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you.